Hi, my name is Beth. Recently, my family and I spent some time discovering what to do in Fukuoka, Japan, and I thought that you might like to tag along. After landing in Tokyo, we changed planes for a short flight over to Fukuoka. The country's fifth largest city, located in southwestern Japan. We made our way over to baggage claim for a preview of what Fukuoka has to offer. And our son, who is studying abroad there, helped us catch a train to drop off our luggage at the Alphabet Inn near Ohori Park. Then we caught another train to the first place our son wanted to show us. The city of Dezaifu, with its countless little shops and restaurants, and the Dezaifu Tenmangu Shrine, whose entrance is marked with large stone tori gates. Our daughter tried her hand at a claw machine, and we inched our way through the Ghibli Studio store before stepping into this 1100 year old Shinto shrine. We crossed three arched bridges connecting small islands in a pond shaped like the Japanese kanji for heart. This temporary hall with its elliptical planted roof sits in front of the main shrine. We enjoyed the colorful, quiet, and simplistic beauty all around. Especially this dock where vibrant plant life surrounds you as you walk out over the Ayame Iki Pond. They've even managed to preserve a couple of phone booths. And this monkey is jumping for joy. And also for applause and yen. <laughs> One of the things I love about Japan are the plastic Sempura menus on display at the restaurants. This one has views of the Ayame Iki Pond. This shrine was one of the few places we saw a Washiki squat toilet. We really enjoyed experiencing the unique Japanese culture here. Next on our list was one of the area's more modern structures, Fukuoka Tower. Our feet were aching, so we decided to take a cab to more comfortably make our way through the streets of Fukuoka. To what we discovered is the tallest seaside tower in the country climbing 767 feet above the shore. Constructed of a triangular cross-section, Fukuoka Tower opened in the spring of 1989 for the Asia Pacific Expo to commemorate the city's 100th anniversary. It offers panoramic views of the city. with the Seifuri Mountains to the south and Kata Bay to the north. Most people visit around sunset, but the clouds kept us from seeing that on this trip. While here, you can also take refuge in the Lover's Sanctuary, where you each touch the arch and join hands to find illumination. Aww. <laughs> We noticed in the elevator that the structure is actually mostly hollow between the observation deck and the base. When you exit through the gift shop, you can buy a miniature cityscape like this one. And take a picture with Futa, the tower's official mascot. This tower only cost 800 yen per adult for the entire visit. Across the street, you'll find Momochi Beach, where you can catch some fresh air, watch or play beach volleyball, or simply take a quiet walk along the shore. And after dark, don't miss the art illuminations lighting up the night, unique for each season and select holidays. Did I mention that Godzilla destroyed this tower? On film, when he fought Space Godzilla back in 1994. I'm so glad they rebuilt it. 
The next morning, my husband and I walked to the center of Fukuoka to visit Ohori Park, which means large moat. Because this lake was originally part of a moat around Fukuoka Castle. The park opened in 1929 and features three artificial islands in the middle of the lake connected by four bridges and a walking trail. With views like this and local musicians setting the mood, it's easy to see why it's a popular spot for couples. The koi fish seem to enjoy it as well. And as local runners will attest, the 1.25 mile path along the lake's perimeter is a great place to get some exercise. During our last day in Fukuoka, we stayed at the Nine Hours Capsule Hotel, which had good reviews, and we had booked two months in advance on Booking.com for around $31 each for a Sunday night. Just a short walk from Hakata Station, it only took us about five minutes to get to the Nine Hours Hotel, which honestly felt so much longer parading our rolling suitcases down the sidewalks in the humid 90 degree weather. You can check in as early as 2 p.m., but since our train arrived earlier than expected, they graciously allowed us to check our bags before then. To check in, you need your government ID or passport to use one of their automated kiosks on the ninth floor, and then you'll receive a personal key card, like this one. Once inside, you are free to explore the lounge, complete with greenery, relaxing music, desktops and seating, free Wi-Fi, and even a balcony with views of the city. In the lobby, opposite the lounge, you'll see two elevators, one for women and one for men. You will need your key card to enter. The ladies' elevator will only take you to pod floors 5 and 6, and the lockers and showers for women on floor 8. And the gentlemen's will only take you to pod floors 3 and 4, and the lockers and showers for men on floor 7. My husband Josh made his way to the fourth floor, where he discovered trash and recycling bins and a couple of private restrooms. Hello! He then slid open an oversized industrial door and saw what we learned was the standard setup of two layers of capsules stacked on top of each other. Josh said the concrete floors and the drab colors gave things a dystopian future feel, like he was about to be put to sleep on a spaceship leaving Earth in search of a new home planet. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. The design was pretty cool. There were places to store your personal items but one of our only complaints was that the air vents inside didn't work very well. So the pod itself was actually kind of warm. We were also surprised that the pod didn't have a door to close. Instead, it had a window type shade to pull down for privacy. It was perfect, however, for him to have a much needed moment alone that afternoon to take a nap. Stepping into the pod hall up on the fifth floor, I was amazed at how eerily quiet it was. My daughter and I had reserved one on the top and one on the bottom. She quickly claimed the upper pod and made herself comfortable. We couldn't resist sharing a Brady Bunch moment. Then she slowly drifted off to sleep. <laughs> Just kidding. It was only three in the afternoon, so we let Josh sleep and we went back to shop at Hakata Station, which has 10 floors, 12 if you count the basement and rooftop levels, containing 230 shops, places to eat, and claw machines. We sadly didn't have time to visit them all, but we sure had fun trying. Well, later that night, the moment that I had been avoiding finally arrived. I was nervous that it was going to feel small, but there's actually surprisingly plenty of room. And the best feature of all? 
was an amazingly comfortable crescent-shaped pillow, which I am still trying to find to purchase online. I plugged in my phone into the conveniently placed outlet, turned out the lights, and actually slept great. Until. Let's just say the pods aren't soundproof, and people who hit snooze before sunrise don't make any new friends. Meanwhile, back in the silent serenity of the fourth floor, daylight peacefully shined in from the window at the end of the hall. <laughs> I wish I could have slept that late. <laughs> Disappointed that he was in fact still on planet Earth, Josh gathered his belongings and slipped off to the elevator. He ventured up to the seventh floor, which was filled with wall-to-wall -wall storage lockers, each activated by a personal keycard. He said it was kind of strange how other guests avoided each other, especially in the public bathroom areas, hardly making eye contact even if you did see someone. But their private shower suites helped minimize any awkwardness. He really enjoyed wearing the complimentary slippers and trying on the jumpsuit-like pajamas that were provided, feeling very futuristic while still hinting at tradition. We regrouped in the lounge, dropped our slippers and PJs into the mark bins in the lobby, and checked out well before the necessary 10 a.m. Then we returned to Hakata Station to find the bullet train to our next destination. But that's another story. We hope you enjoy traveling with us, that you'll take a minute to give this video a thumbs up, and that you'll go ahead and subscribe. You won't want to miss future trips where you can tag along. For those of you who have already been to Fukuoka, let us know your top things to do in the comments section below. And for those of you who haven't been yet, let us know what most interested you in today's video, and see the links to the attraction websites in the description below for more information. Until next time, this is Beth, encouraging you to have an adventure all your own.